Here we're going to look at a pretty quick but fun little number theory problem. So our goal is to solve for all natural numbers m and n such that the sum from k equals 1 to m of k factorial equals n squared. In other words, the sum of these factorials is a perfect square. And the major tool that we're going to use here is congruence modulo n. So let's go ahead and recall what that is. So we say that a is congruent to b mod n, and this is the notation if n divides b minus a. But there's actually a much more intuitive way to think about that, and that's uh, in this following way. So in other words, if a and b have the same remainder when divided by n. And so that's a really important way to think of it because the, we get this big upshot, and that is there are only n minus one possible residues modulo n. And by residues, we mean the actual remainders after dividing by n. So just think about it, if you divide by, for instance, 6, you can have a possible remainder of 0, which means you're divisible by 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5, but that makes 6 total numbers. And that's true for any value of n. So if you divide by n, you can have a remainder of 0, 1, 2, all the way up to n minus 1. Okay, and then after kind of this major tool, we have a big hint and that big hint is that there are only p plus 1 over 2 perfect squares modulo p. And that's where p is a prime. So if you want to see more about the theory behind this kind of thing, you should see the quadratic residue playlist. I taught a number theory class and I made videos for the entire class if you're interested. And um, one of those sub playlists has to do with the so-called Legendre symbol and quadratic residue. Okay, so let's look at a couple of examples real quick before we look at the solution. So I want to point out here that I have prime, but it really should be every odd prime. This whole notion of quadratic residues is only really well defined when we're talking about odd primes. So let's go ahead and first look at p equals 3 the first odd prime, so we would expect 3 plus 1 over 2, in other words, we would expect two perfect squares. We have 0 squared is equal to 0, which is congruent to 0 mod 3. And then we have 1 squared is equal to 1, which is congruent to 1 mod 3. So that tells us that 0 and 1 are perfect squares modulo 3, because we can write them as the square of 0 and 1. And so notice those are always going to be perfect squares modulo any prime. And now let's look at 2 squared. So 2 squared is equal to 4, but 4 has a remainder of 1 after dividing by 3. So in other words, 4 is congruent to 1 mod 3. So notice we've got 0 is a perfect square mod 3 and 1 is a perfect square mod 3. And so what that tells us is that 2 is not a square mod 3. Only 0 and 1 are. So let's maybe look at the next prime. So p equals 5. And in this case, well, we can start off the same. So we have a 0 squared is equal to 0, which is congruent to 0 mod 5. We have 1 squared is equal to 1, which is congruent to 1 mod 5. So like I said before, 0 and 1, those are always going to be perfect squares, kind of trivially. Now we have 2 squared is equal to 4, which is congruent to 4 mod 5. Notice, if we're working mod 5, then 4 is an, an allowable remainder. And then we have 3 squared is equal to 9, which is congruent to 4 mod 5, because notice, if we divide 9 by 5, we get a remainder of 4. And then the next thing is 4 squared is equal to 16, which is congruent to 1 mod 5. Notice it is 1 more than 15. So it looks like 0, 1, and 4 are the only perfect squares modulo 5. And so what that tells us is that 2 and 3 are not perfect squares. <clears throat> so in other words, if you divide a perfect square by 5, you can only get a remainder of 0, 1, or 4. You cannot get a remainder of 2 or 3. Okay, so I'll go ahead and get rid of this. Maybe if you want to pause the video and try to find a solution, this would be a good time to do that, and then we'll look at a solution. Now we're ready to construct our solution, taking motivation from those examples we worked out about perfect squares modulo primes. So let's play around with a few small values of m and see if we can get perfect squares out of them. 
So uh, let's maybe test m equals 1. So that means we're looking at the sum k equals 1 to 1 of k factorial, which is obviously equal to 1, which is equal to 1 squared. Um, and so that works. So in other words, m equals 1 comma n equals 1. That is most definitely like a, a solution to this type of equation. Now let's look at m equals 2 and see what we get. So here we have the sum k equals 1 to 2 of k factorial. So that's going to give us uh, 1 factorial plus 2 factorial. So that's 1 plus 2, which is 3. But now notice that that is not a perfect square. Well, we can just visually inspect that and see that it's not a perfect square. But also, notice that it is congruent to 3 mod 5. And we know that perfect squares are never congruent to 3 mod 5. And so that's using some inspiration from what we saw earlier and what we will see later. OK, so in other words, we get no solution out of this setup. Now let's look at m equals 3. So now let's uh, do the sum k equals 1 to 3 of k factorial. So that's going to give us 1 factorial plus 2 factorial plus 3 factorial. So that's going to give us 1 plus 2 plus 6. 3 factorial is 6. But that is equal to 9, which is equal to 3 squared. So we got a solution. And this next solution that we get is m equals 3, n equals 3. Good. Now let's go one more. Let's maybe do m equals 4 and see what happens. So now let's do the sum k equals 1 to 4 of k factorial. But notice, we can use the fact that we have uh, constructed the partial sum of this already. That's going to be the sum from k equals 1 to 3 and then the extra term. So the sum from k equals 1 to 3 was 9. And then the extra term is 4 factorial. Notice 4 factorial is 24, so we get 9 plus 24, which is equal to 33. Now notice that that is not a perfect square just by visual inspection, because 25 is 5 squared, but then 36 is 6 squared, so we missed 33 as we move from 25 to 36. But also, notice that this is congruent to 3 mod 5. And we already determined that 3 is never a perfect square modulo 5 from our test before. OK, and that's actually really good news because if we go down here to m equals 5, we'll have the sum k equals 1 to 5 of k factorial. But like I said before, that is going to be equal to the sum from k equals 1 to 4 and then the fifth term. So that's going to be 33 plus 5 factorial. But I'm not even going to worry about figuring out what 5 factorial is because I know that if we reduce this modulo 5, 5 factorial is going to be 0. It's already a multiple of 5. So if we reduce this thing modulo 5, we just get whatever 33 was, but that was 3 as we discussed before. So this is congruent to 3 mod 5. In other words, there's no solution in this case either. And this actually gives us the seed for our general argument. Because notice, 6 factorial will also be a multiple of 5, 7 factorial, 8 factorial. In fact, k factorial for everything that is k bigger than or equal to 5 will be a multiple of 5 because we hit 5 somewhere on that descending product. OK, so just to reiterate what happened here, we know 5 is a multiple of 5. 33 has a remainder of 3 when dividing by 5, so we get 3 mod 5 here. So in other words, we have no solution in this setup. So we've got these two solutions, m equals 1, n equals 1 m equals 3, n equals 3, no solutions for m equals 4 and 5. And we've sketched out a way to see that there's no solution past that point. I'll clean this up, and then we'll write that down carefully. Now we're ready to finish this thing off. So I'm going to make the following claim that the only solutions are this ordered pair m and n from the set 1, 1, 3, 3. And you know, 
I've heard in comments that maybe some people consider zero to be a natural number, and we didn't look at the case when m equals zero. So maybe that would be a good thing to check on your own. Can you argue that m equals zero will provide you with a solution to this equation? Write in the comments if you can argue yes or no. So now let's go ahead and write a proof to this claim. So from what we had on the last board, we are okay to m equals five. So we really need to check just for m bigger than or equal to six. So in other words, we can assume that m is bigger than or equal to six because we did a case by case analysis up to m equals five. So let's go ahead and look at that. So we have the sum k equals one to m of k factorial. So notice that's gonna be the sum k equals one to four of k factorial plus the sum k equals uh, five to m of k factorial. And we know the second sum is non-empty because again, m is bigger than or equal to six. Okay, so previously we saw that this number right here was equal to 33. So we have 33. And then it's pretty easy to see that this number right here is a multiple of five. And you can see that because this descending product, which is the factorial, will always hit five on its way down if it starts at a number larger than five. So in other words, we can maybe write this down. This is equal to five times some other number. Maybe we'll call it A. Great. So that means we have this whole thing is 33 plus five times A. And then being inspired by what we did about perfect squares modulo five, we can reduce this equation modulo five, and we'll see that this is congruent to three mod five. Again, if we divide five A by five, we get a remainder of zero. 33 by five, we get a remainder of three. That means that sum has a remainder of three when dividing by five. But we know for all N, which are natural numbers, n squared is uh, congruent to zero, one, or four mod five, and nothing else. So in other words, n squared is not congruent to three mod five. And that finishes our argument that we get no more solutions after m bigger than or equal to six. In other words, those are our two only solutions. So now, maybe before I let you guys go, here are some nice follow-up questions, which I believe can be solved in a similar manner. So the first one is, what if we take the same sum except make it alternating? In other words, we've got the sum k equals one to m of minus one to the k, k factorial. So when is that a perfect square? Now, another one would be maybe, what if we take the sum k equals one to m of minus one to the k plus one k factorial? When is that a perfect square? And then furthermore, what if we start the sum at a different point? So what if we do the sum from k equals m1 to m2 of k factorial? When is that a perfect square? So I think the nicest version of this is if we started at zero. So notice if we had started with zero, that adds a zero factorial to everything. But if we added a zero factorial to everything, that's the number one, but that would have made our residue after um, dividing by five, um, four instead of three. And so we couldn't have used the same trick in that case. So maybe post in the comments if you play around with any of these problems and what kind of solution you get.